I thank God to be in the house of the Lord here today. Amen. We are in here still believing and trusting that where two or three are gathered in the name of God, the Lord says, I shall be there in the midst of them. Where two or three, amen. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I shall be there in the midst of them. We thank God for that. Amen. We always appreciate him for that. It's good to see you all in the house of the Lord. It's good to see Sister Caroline who traveled a long way to be here. We appreciate that. Amen. We trust that even God appreciates that. Hallelujah. There was a time when I see you, I'm reminded, when I see people like you, there are some that come sometimes from Yorkshire, um, Sheffield, and sometimes uh, when I see them, I'm reminded of our father Abraham. When God told our father Abraham and say, I want you to go and sacrifice for me, and that sacrifice has got to be done, in the mountain of Moriah. So Abraham had to go and he kept going. There were so many hills that he passed where he could have just said, here is a hill I could do an altar and sacrifice. But he kept going. What was he looking for? He kept driving. If it was in our day, he would keep driving. Amen. He would keep driving. And uh, they passed another mountain. There are mountains, there are many mountains that he passed by before he could get to Mount Moriah. But he kept going to Mount Moriah. Amen. Because that was the place that God had told him to go. That was the place that God wanted him to be. Uh, so today I, I believe that God wants you to be here. Amen. Not any other mountain, not any other hill, but this mountain where we are today in the presence of God. Amen. So it's good to see you here. And it's good to see uh, the fixed uh, uh, assets in the house of the Lord. Uh, there are some that you know. You know and you know that you know that whenever you come to the house of God, you're going to see them. And may it always be like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Be a people like David where he says, Ah. Come and go with me to my father's house. He says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to be found anywhere else in the gates of wickedness. Amen. Amen. In the company of the ungodly, in the company, he says, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. He says, forget about preaching. I don't care about preaching. I would rather be there and be a doorkeeper. He says, forget about prayer. Ah, he says, forget about singing in the front of the church, standing there and singing. He says, I would rather be what? A doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. He says, forget about instruments. You may not even give me an instrument, but I want to be found where? In the house of the Lord. Amen. So I hope somebody is saying instrument or no instrument. Ah, instrument or no instrument. I will be found in the house of the Lord. Yeah, microphone or no microphone? I will be found in the house of the Lord. Amen. So today we would like to speak about a, a, a topic that we have been looking at uh, these past uh, few months. We have gone on with discipleship, a topic called discipleship. And disciples, someone can ask me and say, who are the disciples? The disciples are those people that have given their lives to God. Disciples are those people that are believers. Amen. Disciples or believers. Amen. Believers, they are those people that have given their lives to Jesus, that have believed in Jesus. Hallelujah. And they have not only believed him, it's one thing to believe, but these have not only believed him, but they have decided to follow. 
to follow. Amen? So disciples are believers who are followers of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In our day and in our time, it's believed that these believers, these believers are found in the house of the Lord. They have made the house of the Lord their habitation. We are reminded, I believe it's in Hebrews. Hebrews is the chapter number, is it 325 or 1125? Not forsaking the gathering together of the saints. So these believers, they come and they congregate in a place that is called the Ecclesia, a place of the separated ones, which is called the church. This is where you follow the Lamb. Amen. You follow the Lamb whithersoever you go with. You follow the Lamb whithersoever. You follow the Lamb whithersoever. He go with. And where we follow the Lamb in our day and in our time is in the church. This is the place. Not forsaking the gathering together of the saints of God as some do. And you have to congratulate yourself to be here today. Amen. Amen. I am a disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am an unapologetic disciple. I am an intentional disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what you ought to be. Amen. Amen. Follow, follow him with all of your heart. You got to follow him with all of your life. Let them know that you are going to, you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Let it be beyond doubt amongst uh, your friends, your family, and everybody that is for that one. She is a follower of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She is a believer. He is a believer. Let it be known. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Is it Brother Paul who says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Amen. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is this good news that we preach. The gospel is this good news that we represent. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Amen. Do you need the power of God? Do you need the power of God? Be a believer of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you need deliverance? Be a believer. Be a believer. This is what will take you out of poverty. This is what will take you out of sickness. This is what will take you out of stress. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, for it is the power of God. Someone say power of God. Power of God. You can initiate the power of God in your life by believing. Amen. Be a forceful believer. Be an unapologetic believer. This is what we call disciple. Amen. Have you found the scripture? Romans 1.16. Romans 1.16. 1, and how does it read? If you can read it for me, please. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed. It is the power of God to everyone that believes. Amen. You cannot experience the power of God in your life if you don't believe. Hey, it is the power of God to who? To someone? To everyone who does what? Who believes. Amen. Amen. It is the power of God to who? To everyone who what? Who believes. Please walk in power. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Walk in power. Walk in power. 
How do you walk in power? You believe in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and you are not ashamed of it. Amen. Amen. It is very important. Can you just imagine you've got someone you think they're your friend. Amen. Amen. You, you think they're your friend. But when they are amongst the other people, they don't want to be associated with Hey, have you seen friends like that? They are happy for you to be friends in public, in private. Hey, my friend, how are you, my friend? Hey, can you let me meet someone, my friend? They are your friends. Yeah? In private. But when you are uh, uh, in certain circles, within their circles, suddenly they don't want to be seen around you. Suddenly they don't want to be associated with you. They are ashamed to be associated with you. They are ashamed to be seen around with you. So brother Paul is saying, you know what? I'm going to carry my Bible because I am not ashamed. I'm going to tell them I'm going to church today. Don't call me between 11 and 2 o'clock because I am in the house of God. I am not what? I am not ashamed. I'm going to post it in my status as put a face right there and put some preaching right there because of what? I am not ashamed. And because I am not ashamed, it is the power of God to them who believe. Suddenly things just go right for me without me even trying to hide. Because of the power of God in me, I am in power. Amen. Amen. Find me a in John. If you will love me, if you will love me. Now I'm talking about disciples. I'm talking about those who love God. Amen. If you will love me, I and my Father will love you. My God, if you will love me, then I and my Father will also love you. And we will come and manifest ourselves in you. We will come and manifest ourselves in you. Can you see it begins from you loving God? Before you can see manifestation, before you can see blessing, before you can see healing, before you can see deliverance, it begins with you loving God. Amen. Amen. If you will love me, as I'm John 14, verse 21. John 14, verse number 21. Read it loudly for me, please. He that has my commandments. He that had my commandment is the and keepeth them. And keepeth them. He that had my commandments. Amen. And keepeth my commandment, right? He it is that loves me. He it is that loves me. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And I will love him. And I will manifest. You know, there are some situations in your life that need God to manifest. There are some situations in my life that need God to manifest. Sometimes you can be praying and crying, God, manifest yourself in my life. Manifest. Ah, ah that's not how you do it. Hallelujah. You love the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He that hear my commandments and keepeth them is the same that loveth me and he that loveth me the Father will love him and I will love him and then we don't stop there when God has loved you he doesn't stop there he says that I will come does he say that? Amen Amen. you, you, you are always crying God come into my situation come in ah, ah. he says keep my commandments as you give my commandments you are showing that you love me and as you love me he says I will what? I will come. Amen. And begin to manifest myself in your life. Amen. And begin to what? 
to manifest. How do you manifest? Manifestation is showing your true colors. <laughs> Amen? I will show them my true colors. Eh? Manifestation, if you hear that a demon has manifested, it means it's showing its true colors that I am a demon. I don't like this situation of you bringing me to church, 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 worship, worship, prayer, prayer. Amen. And it begins to go crazy and people run away. Because a demon, a devil has what? Manifested. You need God to manifest in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. You need God to show his true colors. I need God to show his true colors in my life. I need God to show his true colors in my situation. I need God to show his true colors in my habitation. How does he show his true colors? You say he's Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, the healer, Jehovah, the redeemer, Jehovah, all powerful one. Amen. The powerful God. You want him to show his colors in your life. That yes, I am your deliverer. Yes, I am your provider. Yes, I am what I am. So he chooses to be what he wants to be. If you need healing, he's your healer. Mm -hmm. If you need blessing, he's the one who blesses you. Well, if you need the days of blessings, you don't need no human blesser. Amen. God is your source. Hallelujah. You need business expansion. God. He says, I own the cake on a thousand years. He will manifest. Amen. He will what? He will manifest. Some of you have seen God manifesting in your lives and you know that what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. He will manifest. He has to manifest. Amen. Hallelujah. This is where, where you can carry God with you wherever you go. Because says, and I will love you. And I will come, come to you. Come and manifest. So as you walk into that company, God is walking into that company with you. Because he will what? Come. He says, I will never leave you. No what? No forsake you. So I think when you are ignited, you think you are alone. No, you are not alone. That time you are in your problem, that challenge, and you think there is no one standing with me, you are not alone. Because he says, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. This is the joy of believers, disciples of our Lord. Amen. Uh -huh. This is the joy of disciples of our Lord. Amen. So we have approached this message by way of relationship. We have talked and said it is a relationship that you have with what? With God. Uh -huh. So from our earthly relationships, we know that there is something powerful that works in relationships and that is called communication. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's called what? Communication. It's called what? Communication. You you find people in a relationship asking themselves, do you, you, you really love me? You, 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 do, do you really love me? Say, yeah, yeah, I do love you. Why are you asking such a, a silly question? Because you have never said it. Ah? Do you really care about me? You, 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 do you really care? Yeah, yeah, I care. I'm here now. I'm here. No, no, no. Don't only be here. You need to what? To say it. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm here. Every time I'm here. Yes, but the problem is you do not what? You do not express it. You don't say it. Uh huh? Uh huh? Uh huh? Now, that's the same relationship that we have with our God. Ah, I'm a Christian. Ah, I'm okay. I'm a believer, but you do not pray. 
I love God. You tell other people you love God, but you don't tell him. we're talking about today. And Jesus, if you can find me the scriptures, he taught them to the effect that men ought always to pray and not faint. This is the best that I want you to stay in. Please find me this best. I'm looking for it. And he spoke to them to the effect that men ought sometimes huh? they say you should pray sometimes men ought Always, somebody say always, again always, again always, please again always. Aha, uh -huh. now let us read it together, amen. One, two, read all of us. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. <coughs> Amen. Luke chapter number 18 and verse number 1. Disciples of God. Amen. Ought always to pray and not faint. Followers of God ought always to to pray and not faint. Always. Even if it appears your situation is not changing, you have to always be a man, a woman of prayer. Even if it feels like it's worse than yesterday, you ought to be a man always of prayer. Even when things, this is what I always tell people, we, you should pray most when things are going Amen. Amen. We should pray more when things are going well. When you think things are going okay. When you think they've got it all sorted. When you think they've got it all done. This is a time when you need to what? To pray. You don't know what the devil is planning. You don't know what the devil is scheming. You don't know what is going on in heaven. You don't know. So always you ought to what? To pray and not to fail. Amen? So there is what we call prayer and there is what we call faith. What is to fail? It is to stop praying. Isn't it? To fail is to stop praying. Are you in agreement with me? Men ought always to pray and not faint. Which means to fail is, is, is to stop praying. It's to live a prayerless life. You have fainted. You have fainted. You have fainted. Amen. Now, let us look at fainting in the dictionary. Please, if someone can find the dictionary meaning faint. F I F A I N T. F A I N T, please. If you can find the dictionary meaning of faint. 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 Meaning of faint. Help me, please. Are you there? Men ought always to pray and not faint. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Can I have it, please? Thank you. To faint is of a size, small or some, barely acceptable, the faint member of voices. Two, feeling weak and dizzy and close to losing. Consciousness. The heat made me feel faint. 
then lose consciousness for a short time because of a temporary insufficient supply of oxygen to the brain. <laughs> Amen? So, there is not enough oxygen in your brain, so you are fainting. You lose consciousness. Ah! You lose what? Consciousness. You are no longer conscious of your surrounding. You cannot work. You cannot walk. You cannot burn. You cannot. You cannot because you are now weak and you have lost consciousness. The thing that causes your body to operate oxygen, the thing that causes your body to operate now, has been lost. There is not enough supply. I think I uh, are you getting this now? Are you getting this now? Are you getting this now? It, it, faith is the lack of what? Oxygen. Faith is the lack of what? Oxygen. Prayer is your what? Your oxygen. Prayer is my oxygen. Prayer is my oxygen. Prayer is my oxygen. Prayer is my oxygen. Just as I need oxygen every day. I need prayer every day. Just as I need oxygen every moment, I need prayer every moment. That's why the Bible says men ought always to pray, just as you are always breathing. <laughs> are you there now? You are always what? Breathing. So you ought always to what? To pray. Prayer is the oxygen of a spirit man. Prayer is the oxygen of a believer. A believer cannot live without prayer. A believer cannot work without prayer. A believer cannot succeed without prayer. Somebody needs to pray. Amen. Pray in the morning when you wake up. Pray during the day. Sometime during the day. Just as you need lunch. Have time to also want to pray. Pray when you go to bed. Amen. Amen. You see, I could open a lot of scriptures. I will send some of the scriptures in the middle of the week. We will just send it one scripture every day. One scripture every day about prayer. Amen. But now, I have got to stand here as an advocate for prayer and put a case towards prayer. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Amen. Are you always happy? Are you always jumping up and down? Are you always dancing? So, <laughs> men ought always to pray. Are you always in the right mood? Are you always feeling okay? No. You're always changing like this, changing, changing. Sometimes you feel low, sometimes you feel high, sometimes you feel okay, sometimes you feel happy. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes you feel better. You're always good, but sometimes you feel better. Hey, right? So, when the Bible says always to pray, it means whether you are feeling good or not good or better or high or whatever, you always have to find a way of praying. Whichever way you feel like. You understand? If you are excited, make your excited prayer. If you are lost, then you pray in your low, low voice. But you are what? You are praying. In every situation, you are feeling like you are living now. I think this I am in living now. You are not happy. But then there must be a tone to your prayer. You don't pretend. Your prayer reflects where you are, the state of your life at that moment in time. So you ought always to pray, always. Sometimes you can pray the power. You pray the power. You pray the power. That's the right time for it. Sometimes when you're feeling low, you're feeling low. You still have to pray. When things will find Jesus will go to a mountain and pray. He will pray to his disciples and pray. When he was about to die, he also prayed. This was a time of trouble. It was a time of challenge. 
It was a time when things were not going well. When things were going to be difficult. And he knew he said, Father, there is a cup that is coming my way. If, if the human side of me would like this cup to pass, but Lord, strengthen me so that I can be able to handle this cup. Amen. No, there is a bill that needs to be paid. It's a massive bill. I don't even know how we got to this financial trouble. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that somehow, eh, somehow make a way for me to be able to go through this How we could hear. Things are not moving the way I want them to move, but Lord, in the name of Jesus, make a way for me where there seems to be no way. Amen? And then when you have just checked your bank account and it's a day when your bank account has been highest ever, you've never seen that number. <laughs> May God bring it in your life. Hallelujah. May you see numbers that you've never seen on your bank account. Hey, and say one day, may you see numbers that you have never seen on your bank account. Amen. May you see numbers that you have never seen on your bank account. Amen. And when you see that number, it is a prayer now. This is a Christian prayer. The prayer of life and excitement. If people meet you on that day, they will think that they are prayer, the prayer they make, they use this prayer. No, they are not using this prayer. They just found you on your day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. When you see numbers that you have never seen being associated with you, eh? one day they call you millionaire. Now, 
can shout and sing. He's given me life, life, and I know what proof to him that I will work in labor. You are excited, brother. Amen. Amen. And yet, there will be times when you are low. There will be times when you are low. You don't stop singing when you are low. Mm -hmm. You don't stop singing when you are low. But it's just a different kind of tune. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've
Now they have learned from Jesus. And throughout the book of Acts, even when the Lord is no longer there, they have a healthy relationship with prayer. Mm -hmm. They have a healthy relationship with prayer. They have a healthy relationship with prayer. They are always praying. Okay. When things were seemingly going okay, five minutes going to see where I'm going by now. But such as I have given, give I unto thee. It's in the book of Acts. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have given I unto thee. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Acts chapter number three. Acts chapter number three. Right? Right? Okay. Verse number. Verse number six. Okay. Now, the one that I want is verse number one. Is verse number one. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Now, Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer. Being the ninth hour. So the disciples had a time of prayer. Here things were going okay. Things were going okay. They just received the Holy Spirit. People had just been added to church. Things were going well. Okay. But they had an hour. I've always said it and I'll keep saying it again. Let us have an hour of prayer. Have your own hour of prayer. Your time of prayer. That you respect. That you respect. Your time of prayer. That you respect. Your time of prayer. Amen. Do you want miracles? Do you want God to manifest in your life? Have your hour of prayer. See, these powerful men, how many hours are they in a day? Let's see if you need some mathematics. How many? How many hours are they in a day? Really? So your day is for 24 hours. Okay, she's counting. Okay, she's counting. How many hours are they in a day? So your day is for 24 hours. How many hours? Your day what? 24. Whether you're a millionaire, it's 24 hours. Billionaire, 24 hours. Apostle, 24 hours. But they had their hour of prayer. In that 24 hours, that's God gives you 24 and he asks for one. 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 So you can enjoy all the food I give you, but just have one hour of prayer. You can enjoy all the blessing I give you, just have one hour of prayer. You can sleep all the other hours you want to sleep, but have one hour of prayer. During their hour of prayer, it's Acts chapter number 3 from verse number 1. Amen. During their what? Somebody say hour of prayer. Somebody say hour of prayer. Somebody say hour of prayer. Don't wait until you are supposed to be going to wait until you are in a Russian prayer. Ah, uh -uh. make your hour of prayer where there will be no disruption, no running around, no, 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 no nonsense. Right? Uh -huh. Can you just imagine uh, the, the Queen of India has arrived and you are talking to, to the Queen uh, and you are in a hurry? You, 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 are, you are talking to the Queen and you are in a hurry. Does it look right? How about with God? I just have to be fine with this. Somebody say, hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Hour of prayer. 
Sweet hour of prayer. When you have your hour of prayer, it becomes sweet. They love me, and I am a father who love you, and we will come and manifest. God will be coming to manifest in your hour of prayer. Somebody say hour of prayer. Eh? The trouble with you people, the trouble with you is when you found a millionaire, you, 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 you like asking, how did you become a millionaire? How did you become a millionaire? It is a good thing to ask, right? How about the spiritual things? How about if someone is showing you how to succeed in the spiritual things? How to do where in the spiritual things? Ah, you, you, you start uh, 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 not paying attention. And this is the secret that the apostles had. They had an hour of prayer. And it became a sweet hour of prayer. I've experienced it in my life as well. Whenever I had an hour of prayer, every time that hour comes, I don't need an hour, I don't need anything, God manifests. He shows up for the appointment. You just feel that. I'm telling you, even if you put it at 6 o'clock and you go to bed at 2 o'clock, 6 o'clock will be up. After a while, I'm forcing myself to go to sleep at night. Because 6 o'clock will be up. Have your hour of prayer. Amen? And keep reviving it. Keep reviving it. Keep reviving it. Amen? Have your hour of prayer. You are going to see things. Because of that hour of prayer. Things are going to happen in your life. Because of that hour of prayer. You are going to feel things in your body that you've never felt. Because of that what? Hour of prayer. Struggles will be removed from your life. Because of the hour of prayer. Someone say hour of prayer. Look here what happened. And the crippled men come. After a crippled man come, verse number three, who sing Peter and John as, uh, as arms. Uh, verse number four, Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John, look on us and give heed unto them, expecting to receive something. Then Peter says, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given unto thee in the name of Jesus arise and walk. It happened when the hour. Can you see that God even showed up before they even pray? I was reading sometime in 1995 the scripture and I was bothering myself and saying, why did the miracle happen before they prayed? You know, I used to ask myself, why did the miracle happen before they prayed? How? It's because when you're committed, when you show commitment, God honors that commitment. Even ahead of you. That's because you're already taking steps to go and pray. Something spectacular in that hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hour of prayer. You want to become a person that people cannot mess around with and get away with it. Have your hour of prayer. <laughs> Have your hour of prayer. Have your hour of prayer. You want to go to see God. <laughs> Moses was told, stand still, be still, don't shout, don't shout back, don't scream, don't, don't answer. Just be still and know that I'm God. Do you want God to fight for you? Hour of prayer. Now I'm showing the secrets of being a dangerous disciple. Hour of prayer. They pray. Amen. We as we live today, Amen. We are living at a time when we can make massive impact and massive difference in our generation and in our time. And that can only be done effectively through prayer. 
We are living at a time when we have got an opportunity to change things in our families for good. For good. I mean for people to always be saying, if it wasn't for that one in our family, we could not be here. If it wasn't for her prayer, if it wasn't for her, we could not be living a good life like this. You have an opportunity to change things for good in your life. And in the lives of the people around you, they will be thankful to God and say, God, that one should not die. Most of that difference you can make if you are a man of prayer, you are a woman of prayer. You will make an impact. You will make an impact. And some will know that it's because of you, but they will not want to say, but they. God knows. Amen. Amen. Men of impact, that when oh, before God does anything in your family, He shows you. Shows you. And you start to wonder, why am I seeing this? Why am I, why am I seeing this? God has already shown you. Men of prayer, woman of prayer. Amen. Amen. To a point that when you desire, when you desire, <laughs> when you desire, and say, I would like to live in a house like this, suddenly things begin to shift in your life and shift to a point that you have enough to go that for that thing that you desire. Because what, what does God say? He says, I will grant unto you the what? The desires of your heart. The problem with Christians is you don't pray. You go around admiring rich people's uh, houses. Hey, And you never desire it. You, 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 you admire, but you don't desire. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Stop admiring. Start desiring. To desire is to pray. And God, He has said in His way, I will grant you the what? The desire of your heart. And also He says, whatsoever you pray for. you don't ask. You don't have because you don't ask. Today we're teaching you how to ask. Effectual and fervent prayers. Today I'm committed. I make a commitment today that the trajectory of my life is changing because I'm about to make effective prayers. I'm no longer a spectator in my life. I'm not a I have been saved my life through prayer. I have been saved my life through prayer. I would leave anybody to say things about my life and that one is not going to succeed. I have a success. If you decide to be my enemy, you are going to see for yourself. You will see. You better not be my enemy. If you decide to be my enemy, you will see. Because 
what does Psalm 23 say? He says he prepared the temple for me. Where? In the presence. Don't become my enemy. Because God will come to your face <laughs> and prepare my temple. Now they had taken Peter, they had taken, um, they, they, they taken James and killed him. Finally, the scripture, and because, and because it pleased the people, they took Peter also. Because it pleased the people, they took who? Peter also. And after they had taken Peter also, the Bible tells me that fervent prayers were made of the church for Peter. What is it? Acts chapter number 12, verse number 3. Thank you. Let's go. Acts chapter number 12, verse number 3. Now, let's begin from verse number 1, please. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. <laughs> you, see, you see, if you want the, if you want to be the one that the devil uses to vex people in church, the devil can use you. Can use you. Herod decided to be used of the devil to what? To vex. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Right? To take who also? Peter also. And the church, when they took James, the church did not pray. So James died. Now they have taken Peter. Verse number four. And when he had apprehended Peter, put him in prison and delivered him four quarterings of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him to the people and kill him. Peter therefore was kept verse number five. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Are, are, are you saying that one? Peter therefore was what? Kept in prison. Again, Peter therefore was what? Kept in prison. Why was he kept in prison? So that he could be killed after his death. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Why was he kept in prison? So that he would be killed after his death. Amen. But, eh? the devil thinks you are finished. But, the devil thinks this one is dying tomorrow. But prayers were made without ceasing of the church for Peter. It does it say so? Does it say so, disciples of God? Is it verse number five? But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him, Peter. The problem with you. Is you, you just look at your situation and cry, you look and cry. The church, when James was taken, they looked, they cried. Do you know what the devil did? Killed. When Peter was taken, they looked and prayed. What was the difference? Peter came out. Peter was released. Peter was released. 
Don't just look and cry. I know crying is good, but cry to God. Don't just sit down there and you begin to think about your life. You cry, 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 cry. And things go like this one. Oh, you need me. Church said enough is enough. We are going to make prayers unto God for this man. Enough is enough. Herod is not going to kill any one of us again. Enough is enough. They have killed James. They are not going to kill Peter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the devil not get used to taking things from you. Amen. He took things from me last year, not again, not this year. Amen. I suffered five years ago. I remember suffering five years ago. It's not going to happen again. I'm going to stand up and pray in prayer and defend my territory. Amen. So the church decided that Peter was going to leave. <laughs> Amen. Through prayer. I'm going to decide good things for my life. I'm going to decide good things for my life through prayer. I'm going to decide good things for my life through prayer. I choose no longer to be a passive spectator in my life, but to decide the direction of my life through prayer. I'm going to pray until I see changes. I'm going to pray until I see changes. I'm going to pray until I see miracles. I'm going to pray until I see testimonies. I'm going to pray until I see manifestations. I'm going to pray and pray and pray and pray. Hallelujah. Amen.